Around a third of the European Union's budget is spent on regional policy. That aims to even out disparities in income, wealth and opportunity across the bloc. Much of the cash goes on projects in Europe's poorest regions. Euronews spoke to Karina Kretsu, the EU Commissioner for Regional Policy, to talk about the current challenges faced by her department and, more broadly, Europe. Commissioner, you are here in Brussels since more than four years. Did you manage to close the gap between East and West and between poor and rich regions? We are after crisis. We have a study that uh, shows that many regions cope very well to come back to the growth and uh, uh, employment, but other countries they are still uh, uh, in the stage before crisis. So it's very important that we are now in the ninth se uh, uh, year in a row for economic growth in Europe, which helps uh, a lot. But in the same time, we are we we are not. Uh, there because of the new challenges that we have. As I said, we have also this uh, migration crisis, uh, also terrorism and uh, defense, uh, things where the uh, European Union was not supposed until now to intervene. So we have to accommodate all these uh, things and, uh, of course, we do what uh, we can to, to fill the gaps. After Brexit, we will have less money to distribute for cohesion funds, for example. What would you advise for the regional leaders from the local decision makers? What kind of projects should they propose to, to get money? On the whole EU budget, the average of uh, cut will be 10%. And um, despite of this uh, big challenge, of course, we regret very much uh, the departure of the UK, but we have the, to respect uh, the willingness of the people of this country. Uh, despite of these challenges, uh, we have succeeded to put on the table uh, uh, um, biggest envelope for cohesion policies, 373 billion. And we propose to the member states and to the regions to concentrate on key elements regarding innovation, uh, regarding uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, 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 energy efficiency. So what is uh, now the key uh, driven forces for all European uh, uh, economies. Also, uh, we think that we have to uh, put a lot of attention on social side. Really, I think that we have to do a big effort uh, to f uh, that people to feel that Europe is doing. Because this game, that everything that is bad ca is coming from uh, Brussels and everything that is good is coming from the Lord Mayors and President of the regions and governments, I think should stop. Uh, because we are losers, all of us if we continue to, to, to do so and not to recognize what European Union is doing for the European citizens. Now, the European Parliament uh, approved a proposal to link the European payouts with rule of law standards. How could it work in the future? And uh, is there a risk, according to you, that at the end people will be deprived of European funds because of the mistakes of the politicians. To be honest, I don't understand why uh, some of the member states uh, consider that uh, this proposal is against themselves, because uh, we all pretend at least uh, that uh, we, are, we have zero tolerance to fraud and corruption, and this is to protect uh, EU taxpayers' money. For instance, when Olaf has... Uh, um, a case uh, we uh, uh, we suspend uh, immediately all the funds until the case is solved. When I am, you know, I put myself in the shoes of uh, the net contributors. I understand that you cannot see European Union just like a bankomat. It is a shared solidarity, and uh, in times of uh, good times, we have to be together. And uh, during the, the uh, shaking times, we also have to be together. So Olaf can make only recommendations towards the member states, but do you think there should be an organization above the member states, like, uh, for example, the EU Prosecutor's Office, to control these issues? I uh, really think that it's a step forward. Uh, the, uh, you know that uh, the Commission has this uh, effort for a long time to protect uh, the EU budget. And uh, as you said, the, the creation of the European Public Prosecutor's Office 
uh, which should be up and running at the end of 2020, marks the beginning of a new phase in fight uh, against fraud. Because uh, Olaf, as you said, uh, the European Anti-Fraud Office and EPO, we have another agency will take, uh, which is taking care of, uh, of the, uh, how the money are spent. We'll work in close partnership together with the member states uh, and commission audit work. So um, I really think that uh, this um, uh, new institution will really enhance the capacity to tackle uh, fraud with EU funds and to protect the uh, taxpayers' money. We have less than 100 days until the European elections. What's your prediction? There will be a more fragmented uh, European Union or it will be easier to govern or the populists will come up? What's your prediction? It is uh, obvious that we are in the phase when anti-Europeans and populist uh, waves uh, are raising. And uh, we also made a study about that. Uh, my services, Digirigio, recently published this paper, The Geography of EU Discontent. And uh, this analysis this shows that uh, anti-EU vote is mainly driven by a combination of long-term economic uh, and industrial decline, low level of education, which is essential, and the lack of employment opportunities. Um, in my view, electoral election it will be the biggest test that we'll have after so many years. It's not about political ideologies, it's about pro-European and anti-Europeans. And we, both you as a very known journalist, me as commissioner, we are coming from countries where 30 years ago were on the other side and we have never dreamed to be here. So I really think that it's our duty to defend this European project which is unique on our planet and we have to explain that uh, it was not always the same especially to the young generation because it's about their future and uh, what I would like is to 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 see much more youth people involved in defending our European project solidarity uh, appears in our in all our European papers but in practice uh, uh, I am sorry to say, but the uh, European Union and member states became uh, more egoistic than ever. So I really think that uh, we have to come back to our solidarity and to understand that only together we have su succeed or together we can go down and fail. Commissioner, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much as well.